You want to do some myth busting with me? Let's do it. So here I go. You don't need to worry about PCOS until you're ready to start a family. Fact or fiction? Definitely fiction. I would say this is something that is a huge misconception. It's very much so framed as being a fertility issue, and that's with good reason. It can also really increase your risk for type 2 diabetes, stroke and heart disease, endometrial cancer, like I mentioned, mental health issues. It's just this whole body chronic condition, I think especially from a mood perspective and a quality of life perspective. Just knowing that there's so much that you can do to better control your symptoms can, can just really, really improve people's quality of life. Welcome to the Egg Whisper Show. I have Jane Sagwi, founder and CEO of Polly, and we're going to talk about managing PCOS today. Thank you, Jane, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Amy. I'm a huge fan of yours and your podcast and really excited to be here. Thank you, Jane, for coming on. And I want to tell our listeners and viewers more about you. Jane Sagwi is founder and CEO of Polly, a women's health startup that takes an integrated care approach to complex chronic conditions that either just affect women or impact women differently or disproportionately more than men. These are conditions caused by hormone imbalances like PCOS or endometriosis, but also autoimmune disorders and digestive disorders. Jane attended Georgetown and you're very open about having a PCOS diagnosis. And I imagine that your having PCOS is one of the things that led you to want to create a company like Polly. What have you learned about healthcare? from having PCOS? Top two things I would say in terms of learnings that, that I've gone through myself is that when we're thinking about Western medicine or conventional care in the US at least, healthcare is fragmented and it is reactive. And in my experience with PCOS, I started having symptoms when I was around 18 years old. I was not thinking about starting a family whatsoever at that point in my life. And so the answer that a lot of doctors gave me was, let's just try putting you on a different birth control pill or don't worry about it until you come back and try getting pregnant. And I didn't want to handle it that way. And I really wanted to get to the root cause of what was causing my symptoms. And it was really an uphill battle. And I was in a fortunate position. I had my mom along with me really advocating for me. I was still a kid basically when I was going through all of this, but it's just been a battle for a decade, whether it's PCOS or other health stuff I've gone through, very fragmented and very reactive. It's obvious why you started Polly, but I want to hear in your own words, what led you to start this company? My PCOS diagnosis story and learning how to manage it was not unlike what a lot of other people have gone through. I was dealing with hair loss and acne and insomnia and anxiety that all popped up out of nowhere. It really took a toll on my quality of life and I just found it tremendously difficult to find the proper support. And like I mentioned, my mother was very involved with my healthcare at this point. And so in terms of what I ended up doing, I ended up working with a functional nutritionist and then a functional medicine provider. And they just did way more labs on me than my primary care physician and OBGYN had been doing. And they were really able to figure out what was causing my PCOS symptoms. I was really able to learn how to diminish a lot of those symptoms. I don't even fit the criteria for PCOS anymore. And I could spend hours talking about, was it a misdiagnosis? but it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, PCOS is a spectrum condition. And for me, it was just such an empowering experience. And it was kind of trickled in with a lot of like hardship through there, but I just wanted to give other people that experience connecting with their bodies and understanding how their bodies worked and really learning how to work with their physical selves to better their health. So you're, you've just said three things that I really want to dive into. Number one, PCOS is a spectrum condition. Number two, you worked with a naturopath who basically told you what was causing your PCOS. And then number three, how the healthcare system can better serve women who have PCOS. So can you just talk to us those things? Yeah. So the spectrum condition piece is something that I personally am very passionate about. When a lot of people hear it, they still, their minds go straight to, oh, you're infertile, which is not necessarily true, or it's a disease. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of like pitying other people. There's a lot of oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I think that from a person with PCOS, feeling like you're being pitied just stinks to put it bluntly. But also at the end of the day, PCOS is not a disease. And in order to be diagnosed with PCOS, you need to fulfill two of three of the Rotterdam criteria. Those are high androgens, irregular or absent ovulation slash menstrual cycles, and then polycystic ovaries. Those things can be occurring for a 
broad range of reasons or everyone that has PCOS, their symptoms are not popping up for the same reasons. And so in terms of thinking about like it, it being a condition, it can be a more mild case. It can be a more severe case. And so I was someone that was always on the more mild end of the spectrum. Maybe at the beginning, it was more moderate. And I am someone where I hop on and off the spectrum. And I know that if I get really stressed out, if I start eating certain foods that inflame me, or if I just have high inflammation in general, I will hop back on that spectrum. And for me, the reframing of it as being this spectrum condition has just been really, really helpful. And I think it's helped me made a lot of peace with my body. I think it can help others find some peace there as well. And just... It's learn that like you're not defective, you just have a sensitive body. And I think that thinking about it as a spectrum condition is a really necessary way to get to that point, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And then what did you find was the reason for your PCOS when you looked for the root? Yeah. So for me, my cortisol levels were through the roof in high school and in early college. I was very hard on myself in terms of getting the best grades and doing everything. And I look back in hindsight and I'm like, why was I not just enjoying being a teenager and being a young adult? For me, I really think it was just putting that amount of pressure on myself. And for me, I really do believe it was that stress that was catalyzing my symptoms. And I also think that there's likely a genetic component with me. My mom was never diagnosed with PCOS, but she did have symptoms of a luteal stage defect or low progesterone when she was in the process of having kids. I'm her only child. And we don't know if she had PCOS or if she just had sensitive hormones in general. But when you think about the different subtypes of PCOS, I very much so fit more into that, that reproductive or to people in the functional medicine world, like adrenal type PCOS as opposed to insulin resistant. And so for me, stress management has just been so important. I'm very, very physically reactive to stress. And then you also mentioned the healthcare system. So what did you learn about the health system as you were navigating through figuring out what was going on with you. In terms of the different practitioners that I was seeing at the beginning of my PCOS journey, it was different primary care physicians, OBGYNs, standard Western medicine professionals. And there is a time and a place, obviously, for those people. While I talk a lot about like lifestyle changes for PCOS and functional medicine, I am a very firm believer in Western medicine. And I think that especially with PCOS, things like birth control, if someone has PCOS and if you're not able to get a semi-regular period, your risk for endometrial cancer is increased. And that's where birth control can be really, really helpful, not just for like a day-to-day -day quality of life thing, but a long-term health thing. That being said, though, my experience was that I was being thrown ideas. Let's just put you on a different pill. Let's try putting you on metformin, even though I was not even insulin resistant. I'd say that it was the physicians I was working with were working according to like the standard of care that they knew, but they weren't doing the labs necessary to like even be applying those standard of care treatments on me. And so I think it was a lot of reactivity and trying to treat symptoms as like these one-off things rather than addressing my body and the hormone imbalance as a whole. And then not being able to spend enough time with me just so that I could even explain everything. And again, this is not me blaming any of those individual physicians. When you think about American healthcare, doctors that are working in like the traditional reimbursement system can only spend a few minutes with each patient at one time. And it's really just a mess, unfortunately, and patients are suffering. I hope that Polly is going to now remove that suffering for women with PCOS. And before we get into what I wanted to do is go through some fact or myth questions with you about PCOS. Before we get into that, I want to talk more about Polly and how that's going to solve a lot of the issues that others have faced. And you're going to solve that with your company. So tell us about your vision for Polly and what you're hoping that it will solve. Yeah. So like you explained at the beginning of the episode, Dr. Amy, we're a digital health company that's focused on solving for these complex chronic conditions for females and starting with PCOS for a variety of reasons that we can get into. But in terms of our vision, we really see ourselves expanding into other sorts of conditions, likely thinking about things like thyroid issues to start since there's a big overlap with thyroid problems and PCOS. Things like functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, which is oftentimes misdiagnosed as PCOS. And then also thinking about autoimmune and gut issues, just because when you're thinking about PCOS and or amenorrhea or thyroid issues, it is not just about your hormones. There's very oftentimes a gut component or a, an inflammation component, even an autoimmune component. And there's no one quick fix or one quick pill for any of these conditions. 
And we're doing this all via the means of a mobile app. And so there are many other digital health companies or startups out there that have in like the past decade really revolutionized the way that people receive like diabetes care, for example. We're very thankful for all of those earlier companies because they really paved the way for the model that Polly is taking. And today it's only available for iOS or iPhone users. We will be releasing an Android version soon. In terms of like the type of care that you're getting, we're not replacing the care that you get from your OBGYN or your your endocrinologist or REI, but rather complementing it. And so we want to be working with your existing physicians and your care teams to help you out in like the day-to-day -day symptom management. And so like when someone is diagnosed with PCOS, oftentimes the conversation is you have PCOS, if you're insulin resistant, try reducing or eliminating carbs or just working on balanced blood sugar and come back if you're trying to get pregnant. And, and it's not enough time. It's not enough time in your doctor appointment to learn how to actually manage your PCOS. And research really does show that by taking an interdisciplinary approach, which is provided on our app and making these targeted nutrition, exercise, stress management, and supplement recommendations, the people can really either reverse their symptoms or diminish their symptoms entirely through lifestyle stuff, or if they want to stay on their medication, they can really, really enhance the effects of their medication. And so that's kind of what Polly is. It's like a day-to-day -day support tool for managing your PCOS. And everyone gets a care team that's a registered dietitian and a health coach, your own personalized PCOS plan, the option to do labs, and then there's a symptom tracking and education features as well. That's fabulous. I want all doctor cells to know about this too, because not just like fertility doctors like me, but even like Christians, family practice doctors, primary care doctors. So just like you said, the five minutes that you talk with the patient just isn't enough. And then they can just say, go get Polly and have your PCOS care team. And it, it sounds like for me, having someone engage with Polly just gets them baby ready for when they are ready to have baby, if they need ovulation induction help, then they've already kind of taking care of all the things that they need to make sure they're in the best shape possible for a healthy pregnancy. Exactly. Exactly. There's so much that can be done preventatively. So now let's get into some myth busting. You want to do some myth busting with me? Let's do it. I love myth busting. <laughs> so here we go. You don't need to worry about PCOS until you're ready to start a family. Fact or let's just say fiction. Fact or fiction? Definitely fiction. I would say this is something that is a huge misconception. It's obviously up to everyone and it's your individual choice about if you want to manage your PCOS and when you want that to be. It's very much so framed as being a fertility issue and that's with good reason. It can also really increase your risk for type 2 diabetes, stroke and heart disease, endometrial cancer, like I mentioned, mental health issues. It's just this whole body chronic condition. I think especially from a mood perspective and a quality of life perspective, just knowing that there's so much that you can do to better control your symptoms can, can just really, really improve people's quality of life, life. And then also reduce risk for these health conditions down the line. And I don't mean to be like inciting fear about these conditions. I'm saying that in an empowering way because there really is so much that can, we can all do to lower that risk. Excellent. Okay. PCOS means that you have cysts. Fact or fiction? That is also fiction. It means that you have a lot of ovaries, or not ovaries, excuse me, a lot of follicles around your ovaries. And I think that the name is kind of a misnomer. The follicles themselves are just indicative that your body is trying to ovulate and it's not able to release an egg as frequently as it should be, which is around once a month. And so what can happen is your ovaries will develop that string of pearls around them, but they're not the same thing as ovarian cysts. And I believe that they can like, we've heard that they can sometimes cause discomfort, but generally speaking, they don't have the same risks as ovarian cysts either. It's rather just like a symptom that you're not ovulating regularly. Precisely. I call them polycystic ovary syndrome. It should really be PTCOS, polytiny cystic ovary syndrome. Okay. So how about this? Polycystic ovary syndrome happens because of a hormone imbalance. True or false? I'd say true to some extent for a lot of people, the root cause can be metabolic issues. 70 to 90% of PCOS cases also overlap with insulin resistance and an excess of insulin in your blood can then have this like vicious cycle effect with our androgens. And so I think by definition, a lot of people with PCOS are going to have those high androgens as a part of the diagnostic criteria, but it can also be an inflammatory issue, a metabolic issue, a genetic thing. It's a little bit more complex than just a hormone imbalance. True. So true. Okay. So it's possible to manage the symptoms of PCOS with diet and lifestyle. 
True or false? True. I'm going to make another little caveat though, that sometimes people need the extra support and medication and there's no shame in that. And so I think that in terms of what your preferences are, how severe your case is, that's all going to contribute to what the best treatment strategy is for you. But yes, there's a ton of research, especially just in terms of eating anti-inflammatory and blood sugar balancing diet. That can mean a lot of different things depending on who you are and your activity level and everything about you. That is helpful. And then movement in general is helpful, but not too much movement, a happy level of movement for your body. And then stress management can also really tremendously help. I think anyone who has PCOS or might have PCOS listening to this is going to come away from this from this interview with so much great information. So thank you for doing this for us. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> Jane, that was fun. I love, I could do true or false factor fiction all day long when it comes to fertility stuff. We're both, I'm a fertility mythbuster, you're a PCOS mythbuster. I want to talk more about what can doctors do better for their patients? I think there's a few things. I think that one would be for doctors that don't have a solid referral network in terms of referring people out building up more of a referral network for people with issues like PCOS, but also like thyroid problems, endometriosis. There's such an overlap of these things. I don't think the doctors need like an endo specific dietitian, a PCOS specific dietitian, et cetera. But just having that sort of support, I think can really, really help patients. Like Polly falls into that. And that's how we're really planning on acquiring people in the future and, and getting the word out is by working with physicians. But even if it's not Polly, there's a lot of great other and in, in more independent dietitians out there. And then the other thing I would say is doing one's best to stay very current with the research. And the third thing I would say is just having an open mind when working with patients. I know that it's really, I would think annoying if a patient comes in with like a stack full of research and saying, I want to try X, Y, and Z, because these are the studies that I found about it. That's what I personally do. And some of my doctors have loved it. Some of the doctors I've worked with in the past, I can tell it bugs them. But I do think that just like keeping an open mind, if your patient has done their homework and is coming in with some specific asks and just listening to them is a very beneficial thing is from the patient experience side of things. And what do you think is helpful for someone who's listening to this and doesn't yet have a diagnosis? What do you think is the best way for them to get a diagnosis? I think that being aware of the PCOS diagnostic criteria and then just verbatim going to your doctor and going through those and asking for those procedures is the most helpful thing to do. It's really not a difficult condition to diagnose. You know, it's not like an endometriosis where you need to go in and do a biopsy. You just need to have self-reported irregular cycles and then high levels of androgens, which you can do with lab work, just looking at your testosterone, DHEAS, et cetera, just ask for an androgen panel. And then if you fulfill those two things, you don't technically even need to do the third thing, which is the most quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, invasive. It's an internal ultrasound or a tra transvaginal ultrasound, but it's not something that you need to be like put under for. It's not painful. It's a very quick little procedure to do. And just going in with that list and asking your physician to, to run those tests on you. Jane, if one of my patients wants to join Polly, how do they do that? And then what kinds of things can they do with it? And what kind of improvements have members seen? If you have an iPhone and if you live in the US or Canada, you can just go to the app store and search Poly, P-O-L-L-I-E, or Poly PCOS, and our app will pop right up. You can download it for free. We are only available for iPhone users right now, but that will be changing in the near future. We've got a free version of the app and then our paid PCOS program. The free version of the app is definitely like a lighter touch experience. You have access to our symptom tracking feature, which looks at very like comprehensive PCOS symptoms. It's not just a period tracker, but it looks at gut health, mood, sleep, et cetera. And then also our education library is available for the free version. If you would like to upgrade to the PCOS program, that is available within the app or you can do it right away. We do have a free trial. And so highly recommend that people check that out. And the paid version will also include monthly visits with your care team, which is a registered dietitian and a health coach. 
All of the people on Polly's care teams right now are already specialized in PCOS and functionally trained. And so we just love them. And we're for so fortunate to have the team that we have. And then you also get your own personalized PCOS plan, which is these targeted nutrition, supplement, exercise, and stress management changes based on your labs, which is another big component. And labs are optional, but we highly recommend that people do them if they've not done labs through their physician recently. We can also work with your doctor to get that lab work done. And we are actually doing a deal right now for $100 off any lab package. And listeners of this podcast or patients of yours, Dr. Amy, can use the code Dr. Amy 100 to get $100 off any of our lab packages. And we'll have a third subscription tier coming out soon that will be a lower price point and kind of like a, a flex experience. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing that for my patients and listeners. So Jane, what is next for Polly? So we are very much so in a validation phase right now. We have our consumer subscription. It is unfortunately out of pocket only, but it is also HSA and FSA reimbursable. But our goal is to be reimbursed by health insurance companies. And from an access perspective, this is just a must. We can create the best, prettiest app ever, but if it's not something that is accessible, we have not completely achieved our goals and our mission. And so in terms of what that looks like, we'll be doing an interventional study in the upcoming month likely early next year so that we can validate that the program actually works and is showing that it's improving PCOS health markers like androgens and lipid levels and metabolic markers, et cetera. And then also for insurance companies, the thing that they're concerned about, of course, is cost. And we're going to be working on billing insurance for just like telehealth consults through poly lab work. We're always looking for feedback and people can reach out at support S-U-P-P-O-R-T at poly.co if you have any questions. We have our core program, but it's very much so an early startup. And so we're able to be pretty nimble and move quickly. I'm extremely proud of you. I remember seeing, I think it was a Google alert or something about Polly. And I reached out to you and said, I need to meet this woman. I need to make sure that she knows how impressed I am by her. So I am so impressed by you. Thank you for changing the lives of patients with PCOS. And I'm sure you're getting such amazing feedback from people using your app, but you're getting this feedback from me. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means the world to me, truly. And, it, and my co-founder, Sabrina, I think that hearing feedback from people like yourself who work with a lot of people with PCOS and know firsthand just like the burden that it puts on people, it means a lot because you know the issue very well. <laughs> I can't wait for you to come back on and share with us the intervention phase of the app and what you learned. So you have to come back on and talk to us about that too soon. We're excited. And that sounds great. Thank you so much for having me on. Welcome, Jane. Before we close, is there anything else you want to add? before we end today's show. The last thing I will add is just like a word of encouragement to people with PCOS. It's, it's such a difficult condition, not just in the day-to-day -day symptom management, which can be really discouraging, but also the future and thinking about our future fertility, future health risks. It can just feel like such a burden. And I think that educating yourself and knowing that this is not any sort of a sentence of infertility or a sentence of diabetes or endometrial cancer, it's just not. There's so much that can be done proactively. And so I just encourage people to, rather than panic, which I've been there before, I've been in panic mode for a long period of time about my PCOS in the past, to instead try to ingest as much information as you can, whether it be a program like Polly or following social media accounts like Polly's or Dr. Amy's or another practitioner, try to stay centered and keep listening to your body and don't take no for an answer if like you want to do more labs and your physician is saying no, et cetera. But just know that there is very, very likely a light at the end of the tunnel and all of those health risks can still happen, but there's so much that can be done to prevent them. And the diagnosis itself should be an empowering thing. Absolutely, it shouldn't be frightening to get the diagnosis. The more you know, the better things will go. And test, don't guess. Thank you again, Jane, and I hope to see you soon.